Go. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. And thank you for tuning in to another program of a greater understanding. I know you waited all week for Tuesday at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. The whole earth was waiting to see our program. And I'm Reverend Lawrence Adel Sipa with Cities of Hope Ministry. And next to me is Wayne Tierney from Food for Thought Ministries. Yes. And today we've got um, something very important to you. Some of us want to know what it is like to hear the voice of God. And we're going to talk today about how do you hear God's voice. So stay tuned. Be blessed. I stand amazed at the way Jesus loves me. I stand amazed at the way that he can. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. And I'm Reverend Lawrence Adel Sifa with Cities of Hope Ministry. And to my left is Wayne Tierney from Food for Thought Ministry. Yes, and uh, thank you for, for being patient the whole week, waiting for another program of a greater understanding. And uh, all of you uh, that are on the program and you've shared it with others, share this with your family, your friends, and your enemies, Brother Wayne. And you know why your enemies? Because your enemies just might one day be your brother or sister in Christ. And if they're not, it's by their own choice, by their own choice. Uh, Christianity is not a, uh, how would you say, a belief where you are forced to believe it, right, Brother Wayne? What's that? God doesn't want to force anybody no, to become no. a Christian, uh, anointed no. by God to prosper. Well, we, um, we're going to talk about how do I hear God's voice? And that's an important topic. Uh, and we're going to break it down. There's a lot of different ways that God speaks to us. He has spoke through all the Old Testament and the New Testament uh, to different prophets, evangelists, teachers, pastors. And, uh, um, and, and the thing is, some of us don't do one thing. You know what that is, by the way? Well, listen, yeah. <laughs> you know, God speaks to us. We don't listen. But uh, you know about today, uh, every Tuesday from 11 to 12, uh, Greater Understanding Genesee uh, live you go to and uh, you're able to partake of. You can ask questions. Um, if you want to talk about a different topic, uh, is that permissible, Brother Wayne? They yeah. can talk about a different topic. Okay. Talk <laughs> about anything they want. To talk. talk about anything, anything you want. Uh, politics, uh, life, uh, all of it is in this 66 books uh, that was canonized specially as an open book test for us. And then on Tuesday night, we have a Bible study that I do. And um, we are going to look at uh, tonight at six o'clock. Eastern Standard Time to 7.30. And uh, you can dial 701-802-5180. That's 701-802-5180. And, uh, oh, here, we got a call. You're on the air. It's Greater Understanding. Who's calling? Oh, hi, uh, Reverend. This is Eddie. Eddie, how are you? Thank you for calling in on our, rate, on our pro podcast program. I didn't. I I just left my house and wanted to talk to you, but I didn't realize it was calling you on the program. Oh, that's all right. We, we're we're studying right now. How do uh, you hear God's voice? Do you have any questions on about how to hear God's voice? Well, I funny you ask because I um, just listened to a, a video uh, teaching on when God is silent. When God is silent, yeah, you know, you know, sometimes God is speaking, and we mentioned earlier that we don't do one thing, and you know what that is? Listen, listen, you got it. Listen, you've won the sixty-four thousand dollar question. Yeah, we don't listen, and uh, some of us hear God's voice, hear the words, and you know what we don't do? We don't do what He says. Isn't that amazing? 
know. That is amazing. But um, but thank you for calling in. Uh, that's Eddie Dombrowski, and uh, he's he's a, a brother in Christ. Hello, Eddie. Oh, that's Hello, Wayne here. Go ahead and talk to Wayne. God bless you guys. All right. Thank you very much, Eddie. Just to, just to add a yes. thing that what I came to understand is when God is silent, it's not because he, he doesn't love you or because what he's trying to do is get your attention ah. and, and for you to recognize that there's a change that's needed in your life. Mm. And that's the big thing that uh, when he's silent, because the Bible said that his sheep hear his voice and know so it. When, yeah. And so when he's silent, it, you know, he wants you to um, press in more than before so that you can hear his voice again and, and that you're obedient and you're listening and you're obedient to what he has to say. Because if you hear his voice and you're disobedient, what's the use of telling you? That's true. And disobedience is as witchcraft. Isn't that correct, Brother Eddie? Yeah, it's rebellion. Rebellion. And rebellion is as witchcraft. As so witchcraft. Yeah. We don't want to be, we do not want to be rebellious. We want to be quick to hear and, uh, and uh, listen and hear his voice and be obedient. That's know? right. That's right. And and it's so important. So, anyways, thank you for calling in, Brother Eddie. You got anything else you'd like to say to our our hearing and and viewing uh, uh, public? I didn't get that. Do you have anything else to say? Um. Well, yes, I do. It's just that a lot of people are going through uh, trials right now. Yes. And uh, they don't understand why. I met a young man at church yesterday, and I'm sitting on the on one of the uh, weather-free couches outside on the patio. And What church did you attend? Uh, Floodgate. In, Flood uh, Brighton, in Brighton, Brighton Michigan. Michigan, Floodgate Church. And who's the pastor yeah. there? Uh, that is Pastor uh, Bill Bolin, a wonderful man of God. Wonderful. And uh, his wife, uh, Clara. Um, but the young man, uh, you mean when I say young, he was about 40. That's young. Uh, I just <laughs> coincidentally was sitting down. So we started talking and within a few minutes, uh, we found out that he was struggling in his marriage. So people are going through trials that he had given up on God and was mad at him because he God wasn't answering his prayers and and so <laughs> in fact uh, he he texted me this morning and said after our talk I got up at four thirty this morning and pressed into the word wonderful you know that because we all need encouragement uh, yes. to study to show ourselves approved and to you know God speaks through His word mainly. Yes. And then as we know his word, he can, uh, as we're trusted to be obedient to his word, then he, he gives us more. Yes. And God sent his word into the earth to save the lost and uh, also to heal the brokenhearted and to destroy the works of the enemy. And you know who what his name is, don't you? Yeah. Jesus. Well, he sent his word to. Uh, bind up their wounds and and deliver their life from their guess what their own destruction own destruction so his his word you know because we get off on the uh the wrong path of life we take a detour and to our to what to our own destruction our own so destruction he wants to bring us back into the light yes so he does we're not stumbling over things we don't know. Yeah, into his marvelous light. Yeah. And giving us the opportunity if we choose to be sons and daughters of God. Amen, yes. Yeah. And that's God's desire for us to uh, be healthy and walk in the light and ha have our souls prosper and 
uh, be in health. And, you know, that's his, his, uh, he delights in his children and he wants us to, uh, give us that inheritance that he died for. Yes. Yes. You know, you know, Bishop Earl Fisher with the unity of faith Christian church there in uh, Flint on uh, uh -huh. Fenton road in Atherton or Pettibone. Yeah. Uh, his favorite saying is to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Yeah, and that's what the Word of God says. That Jesus says, I wish above all things that you be in health and prosper, even as your soul prospers. Yeah. So we can we can have health, we can have wealth, but our soul, it's tied to soul prosperity. Yes. And matter of fact, Bishop Earl Fisher next week, folks, we're going to interview him right here. On a greater understanding, oh, Genesee. So, oh, oh, that's going to be wonderful. Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. well, gotta let you go, brother Eddie. Thank you for calling All in. Right. Yep. Be blessed. Be, blessed. be safe. Bye bye. Well, anyways, that was Eddie Dombrowski, and uh, he is a brother in Christ. Um, he's a little bit older than me. Um, I think he's 75, 75, 76, but he acts like a teenager. He acts like a teenager. But anyways, we were talking about, you know, everyone knows about Greater Understanding, Genesee, uh, 11 to 12 every Tuesday, uh, Eastern Standard Time. And also the Bible study, uh, which you dial 701-802-5180, and that is 6344132 pound, and that is under the auspices of Mount Hermon Ministry. Uh, and uh, that one there, uh, we're going to talk about, let's see, we're going to talk about who am I? And how do I identify our identity in Christ? That's important. And uh, that's what we're going to study. Um, also, uh, on Saturday, Brother Wayne, what do we do on Saturday at noon? At noon, we have a radio program. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. At 12 o'clock. And it lasts till 1215. And we do that every Saturday. Every Saturday. And you know what this Saturday, uh, the 10th, is going to be about, Brother Wayne? What? How your personality connects you with God. Mm -hmm. How your personality connects you with God. That and, sounds like the temperaments. Yes, yes. It has something to do with that. And uh, it talked about how uh, it says, it's since I became a Christian, it's been a struggle to consistently connect with God. Like me, you may also tend to think that most other Christians are experiencing God more deeply than you are, you know, and it's, it, it ties in with what Brother Eddie said, you know, sometimes God is silent, you know, and um, his silence is because he wants you to listen to him, you know, uh, when when you're well, if, if you how do you know he's silent if you're not listening to him? That's well, okay. if you are and you don't hear his voice, though, Brother Wayne, don't hear his voice. Well, then, I'm sure that God has a reason for not answering. Uh, you know, I'm uh, you know, I don't know why God doesn't answer, uh, but uh, uh, sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know. So, I guess, you know, uh, what we need to do, we still have to have faith that God knows what he's doing, right? Uh, regardless. you think he knows what he's doing? Oh, absolutely. Why do you feel that way? Absolutely, because he's my Lord and Savior. Yes, yes, he is. That's right. Yes. And uh, if, if ever have you uh, ever found yourself thinking, I wish God talked to us the way he spoke to his people in the Old Testament? You ever thought that? Well, I think there's a difference between your thoughts and, and hearing from God. I mm -hmm. think there's a difference there. Yeah. Uh, and many times scripture describes God speaking to his people through a voice or an angelic angel or a dream. Uh, he even writes on a wall in one account in Daniel 5. So it's natural to want to hear God's voice or see a big sign, big sign that he will help you feel confident in God's direction. Um, we all experience Confusing circumstances, don't we? Yeah. And and sometimes you may just want God to send you a text message <laughs> and tell you what to do, but he doesn't work that way. Or maybe he will work through someone else. Maybe you touch someone's heart. You know, like you said, uh, we talked about in previous programs uh, where let's say I was a sinner and uh, God can't talk to me directly, but he has Brother Wayne Hearney 
who is has received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, right. and work through you mm. to help me uh, have I'll the pray opportunity. Pray for that person, and God can answer that prayer, but yes. He can't answer the other one. Yes, isn't yeah. that amazing? The sinner's prayer. Yeah. So maybe, the only one He listens to as a sinner's prayer is the the prayer of salvation. Prayer of and salvation. He has, an, he has an obligation to answer that one. Yeah, He has. He's obligated to do that because that's why He came. I think that. Uh, uh, if you if we're talking about learning how to hear from the from God, yes, uh, I think the main thing is is that we have to. The Bible says to walk into the in the Spirit, but I don't believe it's talking about the Holy Spirit. Hmm, walk in I, the I Spirit. I believe it's talking in your Spirit. Your Spirit, because your Spirit is the one that's connected to the Holy Spirit. Only when you've received Jesus Christ. Only when you receive yeah. Jesus Christ. Yes. And I think that I I think that that uh, the the spirit. See, I think that uh, you know we're divided up into body, soul, and spirit. You know, we have a okay. we have a body, and it has a spirit, but it possesses a soul. Soul, and the soul okay. is what your, your will, your will, your mind, and your emotions. Your emotions. Okay. Those are the uh, how would you say the icing on the cake of your life. Right. Okay. And and you know the thing, maybe you you feel far from God. And want him to reach out to reassure you he's still there. Uh, well, many times, I was going to say that that uh, uh, what it is 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 the the emotions and your mind and your uh, actual well, uh, it's your senses, you know, your senses that that give information to your soul. Yeah. It 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 it, it what it sees and hears and touch and feel and smells gets into the soul okay. okay the soul in turn tells your spirit the spirit has a conversation with the holy spirit to determine whether it's righteous or unrighteous or it's dead or yeah or and and once it's considered to be unrighteous then the, the spirit turns around and tells the soul get out of that it's wrong it's unrighteous but then the, the soul tells the body but sometimes the body what it does is just sit there and says Tell that spirit to shut his mouth. I don't want to hear it. Really? I, I don't want to hear it. I like this. This feels good. Yeah. Sin. You know, and then it turns around and says, the soul, don't it feel good to you? And the soul's like, yeah, well, yeah, I know it's wrong, but it does feel good. So there's a tension between that's where the, your that's body, where the, your spirit, that's where the, and your, your, uh, that's where the will. battle is between the flesh and the spirit over the soul. Wow. So if we walk in the spirit, the, you have to walk in the spirit to be able to hear from God. Okay. You have to do that. You can't walk in the flesh. No, you have to walk in the spirit, your spirit, your well, spirit. Well, there were 12 disciples, actually, what, 140 mm -hmm. disciples that let me that give you an example. To Jesus huh? in the flesh, by the way. Let me give you an example of this. OK. And uh, where are you right now? And Ma Matthew 27. Hold on, let me get there. Matthew. That's the book of Matthew. We'll start at 17. Now, this is going to be a little bit All lengthy. Right. but Hold on. Hold on. Matthew 27. Right. Well, that's just before 28. Matthew 27 and start at 17. Matthew 27 and start at 17. Okay. 17. All right. I'm there. Therefore. This will, this will show an example of a person who heard from God but did not and, and gave what he heard from the per, from God, but the person refused to listen. Yeah, well, the first word is therefore. Is it therefore in your Bible? No, it says so. No, 17, right? Yeah, 27, 17. Well, I've got 27, 17 says therefore, and you know, it's good to know what the therefore is there for. Mm. But go ahead. So when the people gathered together, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus who called Christ? For he... For he knew that because of envy, they had handed him over. Then it says, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him a message saying, have nothing to do with that righteous man. For last night, I suffered greatly in a dream because of him. Did she text him or? That was something, that, you know, the Bible says that God comes to you in dreams and visions. Yes. Okay. Uh, obviously, God came to this woman. His wife to say have nothing to do with this with this righteous man. His wife said that. His wife said that. So okay. she was listening to God. Now listen what happened. All right. It says, so last night I suffered greatly in a dream because of him. But the chief priests 
and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and put Jesus to death. Okay. Could I ask a question? Weren't they both Jesus Barabbas and Jesus? Huh? I heard their names were Jesus Barabbas and Jesus. Both of them were Jesus. Well, I don't know if they were both Jesus, and I don't yeah. know who Barabbas is. But the point, the point here is that sometimes, thank you, Jesus. Sometimes the revelation. Yeah, I'm getting something. <laughs> uh, sometimes when uh, uh, we ask God or we pray for God for something, we allow public opinion to affect us. Wow. Public opinion. And this is exactly what happened here, even though he had done nothing wrong. And the and Pilate had said that he had done nothing wrong. Yeah. Jesus. Okay. But they still wanted Barabbas. Why why do you suppose they wanted Barabbas? Because Barabbas was more like them instead of Jesus. More like them. He, more he like was them. a thief. Yeah, he was a thief. He was a revolutionary. Right. And he was more like them. That's you know, and a lot of times that's what we do when we look for leaders. We look for leaders that are just like us, right. <laughs> you know, doing the same stuff we're doing, you know, so that they can't, so that you can't uh, condemn them or judge them or whatever. Because Barabbas was much like the crowd, sinners. Yeah, the crowd was 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 the uh, uh, the mouthpiece. Public. Was public a public opinion. opinion. Yes. Public opinion. And we see that public opinion affected the way that Pilate ruled. And that's what happens with a lot of us today. We allow other people's opinions to, to direct rule. us instead of instead of the word of God. Well, he asked. He asked, Who do you want me to release? On yeah. that day, usually that time of year, they would release a prisoner. Release a prisoner, yeah. Okay. So they wanted Barabbas. Right. And destroy Jesus. Right. Okay. All right. And then what 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 else? What what went on it says but when the governor said to them which of the two do you want me to release for you and they said barabbas Pilate said to them then what shall i do with jesus who is called christ they all said crucify him mm. and he said why what evil has he done but they kept shouting all the more saying crucify him when Pilate saw that he was accomplishing nothing see that's the that's that's the problem when you get into a public opinion versus God, you know, God seems to be on the losing end. That's the crowd mind. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, he said, "What? Uh, uh, when Pilate saw that it was accomplishing nothing, but rather that a riot was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See, see to that yourselves. And all the people said, his blood shall be on us and on our children. And it was. Then he released Barabbas for them. But after having Jesus scourged and handed him over to be crucified. To be crucified. Okay. And Pilate, who was a representative of Caesar right. at the time, um, and he was actually walking like Caesar. Mm -hmm. And Caesar was considered God. So he was he was listening to God as well because he was saying this man has done nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, this man was not a criminal. Well, but, but yet they still wanted Barabbas. Well, it was confirmed by his wife. Right. You know, they said old men shall have uh, dreams and young men shall have vision. See, the, import, the importance of the body, soul, and spirit, the most important thing of all three is your soul. Because it's both one. See, the soul can decide to go for God, but it can also decide to go against God. Yeah. You, you know, they, they, they claim Jesus, our Lord and Savior, as mm -hmm. the lover of our soul. Wow. He loves our soul. And why do you think he loves our soul? Uh, in your your opinion, I you know I maybe maybe be I, thank you Jesus. Go ahead. Maybe that's the reason why God loves the soul because it contains the will. As the will. The will. The ability to decide. To what decide to do. What to do. What to do. And that's when Jesus was in Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. He was he was conversing with the Father. Right. About his will and the father's will right and he he finally ended up that battle that was fought on the cross was fought in gethsemane with the father right and he said let it be your will and not mine, mine. right because um right. the father knew what they wanted to do even before the foundations of See, the world. it just goes to show what i've said before is that your soul which contains your mind your your will and your emotions uh in this particular case with jesus Jesus had to uh, put down his emotions. 
Yeah. He had to he had to forsake his emotions. He could not let emotions dictate to him. No, no. He did not allow that to happen. He said, nevertheless, let your will be done, not mine. Right. Say so he had to he had to uh uh get rid of the, the feelings. And that's one thing that feelings will always do is that they will always have you fight against God. Right. And they always do. Well, the father sent the word, which was his son. Mm-hmm. You know, in, in other religions, like the Druze religion, mm-hmm. they talk about kilma, which is some of your Arabic kilma, which means the word. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, they had the uh, akal, which is the father, kilma, which mm-hmm. is the world, and nephes, which is the spirit. And many religions, um, what do you say, mirror the Christian religion. Mm-hmm. Many of them do. But there's one thing that they don't have, and that's Jesus. And Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, since I received Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, my life has been troublesome. <laughs> Problems. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know. Pick it, up your cross and follow me. That's right. Yeah. And 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 the enemy uh, just takes me out, wants to take me out. You know, um, there was a, a good uh, uh, talk that I had text to. I think I sent one to you this morning. What? About um, how when we follow Jesus Christ, um, the enemy wants to take us out. Yeah. You know, and it's important. Well, the enemy wants your soul. Yeah. Uh, you know, he wants your soul. Be, like I say, for the same reason, because the will. The, the will has the ability to choose between the two. And it's the deciding factor of how the flesh will follow. Yeah. Well, maybe you've heard people say the God of the Bible is personal. But you have never interacted with God before and wondered how to begin. You wondered how to begin. And we're talking about hearing his voice. Uh, He is the same today. He is the same in the Old Testament, yesterday and tomorrow. And he still speaks to us today. Mm -hmm. The God of the Bible speaks to us today. Uh, The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the living God. He made it possible for each of us to have a personal relationship with him made it possible through the word, through Jesus, which involved talking together every day. He communicates with us. And this this hearing God's voice, how do you know it's not Satan speaking, Brother Wayne, and, and God? Let's say you receive the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. You're, you're, you, you know, you're, you're, um, you've received the Holy Spirit. Jesus is your Lord and Savior. And sometimes that spirit tells you something different. What do they call that? Familiar what? Familiar spirits? Spirits telling you something. Oh, familiar different. spirit is a demonic force. It's yes. a demonic, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, the thing is, is, is to me, uh, how you can tell the difference between uh, the spirit, Holy Spirit and, and your spirit is, is that I believe that the Holy Spirit uh, talks with your spirit and then gives you peace, love, joy. Long suffering, uh, long, you know, all these things along with the fruit uh, of the spirit, w- with what you're, you're you're asking God for. Therefore, I think that you have to be very spiritually uh, uh, trained, yeah, to hear the voice of God. Well, yeah, you know, when I when I first started listening to the Spirit, I, I questioned God, and it's good good to ask the Holy Spirit questions because He's Mary there. did, he's, yeah, He's our comforter. Yeah, you know, He He, he He's a gentleman. He's not an it. He's a gentleman. Mm -hmm. And uh, he speaks to us. And he Mm -hmm. doesn't speak anything different than he hears the Father speak. And uh, I said, well, you know, uh, Father God, how do I know it's you and not the adversary? And he says, basically, it's very, you know, very, very simple. There's a simple way to do it. Yeah. He said, both Satan and I are mathematicians. Mm -hmm. Satan, if you hear anybody speaking about subtraction and division, that's Satan. Mm-hmm. If you're anybody speaking about addition and multiplication, that's me. And uh, to to understand the creation of the universes, uh, God is a wonderful mathematician about addition and multiplication. And so in a world full of noise and distraction, how does God speak to us? Well, here's some shortcuts uh, to specific sections. The content in this is different ways God speaks in the Bible. We're going to look at that. Pursuing God is essentially to hear God. 
Uh, God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. And what distracts you from hearing God's voice is a question we're going to go over. And how do I know you're hearing God's voice? And then we talk about four tips uh, to practice hearing God. Now, different ways God speaks. Um, he spoke to Samuel as a child mm -hmm. and in the temple. And that's Samuel 1.3. Uh, I'm going to go to that, and it, it's a whole chapter, but I'm going to just condense it. Uh, if you go to uh, second, let's see, first Samuel, first Samuel three, and Samuel was a prophet, was a son of a lady that actually prayed to have a son, and said that if God gave her a son, she would dedicate him to God. And she did that. She took him to the temple. And Samuel was a very important prophet, very important prophet uh, in the Bible. And if you go to Samuel um, 3, 1 Samuel 3, and uh, it's a call from the Lord. And the, the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Elijah, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision, okay? And it came to pass, it says in second, that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And Eri, the lamp of God, okay, went out in the temple of the Lord. There the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. And that was the baby, Samuel. The Lord called Samuel and he answered, here am I. And he was listening to the Lord all through that. Now, Brother Wayne, you have a scripture there. Um, it's in, he spoke to Elijah. Okay. And Elijah, um, he was the one that at his word, he told uh, Ahab and Jezebel that it would not rain. But he, he spoke that through faith, great faith. And Elijah was just a farmer. And he spoke to Elijah, not through an earthquake or a great wind, but with a still small voice. In 1 Kings 19, 1 Kings 19, uh, 11 to 12, what does that say, Brother Wayne? So he said, go forth and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord was passing by. And a great and strong wind was rendering the mountains and breaking into pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of a gentle blowing. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Then he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the sons of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. And I alone am left and they seek my life to take it away. The Lord said to him, go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you have arrived, you shall anoint Hazel king over Aram. Yes. And, you know, he thought he was the last one. But he found out there were 7,000 yeah. others prophets. And uh, and he found that out. Also, God spoke to Moses in Exodus 3 um, audibly, audibly uh, through the burning bush. And, you know, uh, everyone says, well, he spoke to the burning bush, you know, and this and that. But, you know, Moses at that time was practicing being a shepherd under the auspices of Jethro. Uh, because his wife, Zipporah, that was her father, and he tended his sheep. You know, after spending 40 years with Pharaoh learning how to be a ruler, uh, Jethro taught him how to be a shepherd and how to delegate and uh, actually directed him to God on the mountain, on Mount Sinai. The thing was, uh, he was up there and, you know, for a shepherd to see a bush burning in the desert was not a big deal, but a bush that did not consume to continue burning and not consuming and that's and that was that was you know he wanted to look in there and uh he did look and he uh who was talking god was talking 
audibly with him. And if you look at uh, in Exodus 3, it says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. He was a Midianite. And uh, he led him, the flock, to the backside of the desert and came to a mountain called Horeb. Okay, the mountain of God, they called it, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. Angel of the Lord. Many times angel of the Lord, that is Jesus himself. And behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses, he was very intrigued with that bush, brother Wayne. And he said, I will now turn aside because he wanted he wanted to see God's face okay and behold the bush and then and Moses said I will now turn aside and see this great sight why the bush is not burning and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see God called unto him in the midst of the bush and he said Moses Moses and he said here I am am I here am I. And uh, he said, draw not thither, put thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where you walk is holy ground. And moreover, he was looking for submission of Moses, for Moses to submit himself. See, Moses was a ruler and taught by Pharaoh to submit to no one, okay, to no one, because Pharaoh at that time was God in Egypt. Pharaoh was God. And they had the 10 gods that, that God destroyed while taking Israel out of, out of uh, Egypt. But it says, and then and it said, draw nigh hither and put off thy shoes because it's holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am, I am, Brother Wayne. And what does it mean when he speaks I am? That he's God, mm. he's God. And the God of the father, thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And he was afraid, and he looked upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cries, and reason their, their taskmasters uh, for their great sorrow. And I, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians, and bring them into the land flowing with good, large flowing with good milk and honey. And the reason flowing milk and honey, milk does not spoil. Milk changes consistency, cottage cheese and sour cream and cheese and things like that. They didn't have refrigerators in those days. And honey, uh, it only crystallizes. You heat it up, you know, it, it doesn't spoil either. And honey is, is, a, is a very marvelous, um, how would you say, a marvelous, um, food to help you with allergies and things like that. And uh, then he, he told him, he says, I want you, I want to send you. And he says, who am I, Lord? And Moses was humbled, finally humbled after learning how to be a shepherd with uh, Jethro. And he says, I cannot speak. So he says, take Aaron, your brother, and Aaron will speak for you. And that's what they did. Well, we always come up with some excuse not to follow God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't have time. Yeah. Or I'm I'm busy, too busy. Yeah. You know, I had that problem when I first started following uh, God, and um, I says, God, I don't have time. And He says, Well, you know, I want you to go and minister to this one or that one. I don't have the time. I was I was stuck on the cares of this world, mm -hmm. you know, how to feed my family, how to pay for the rent, mm -hmm. how to pay for the lease on the car payment. And uh, uh, he said, follow me, follow me. And uh, I did. And I, uh, being a good uh, follower of Christ, I prayed, you know, because Christ is a prayer warder, right? Mm -hmm. I prayed. I says, I need more time, Lord. And, you know, he gave me more time, by the way. You know what he did? Anytime he would send me to someone, He'd show me him standing with tears in his eyes for all those souls that I did not witness to. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, Lord, times go. Let's, let's, let's make it happen. You send them to me. I'm going to talk to them and we'll minister to them. At least give them the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Now, Matthew 21, uh, 2 through 7 
You want to look that up, Brother Wayne. And uh, signs came in many forms in the Bible times. Uh, Parting of the Red Sea in Exodus 14. And the disciples fi finding a donkey colt exactly when where Jesus said that they would. You know, he told them, he says, go and, go and find this colt that has never been sat on. And I have the, you Matthew 21, 2 through 7. And you're right. Dreams and visions are depicted from the beginning of the Bible to the end. Did you know that? Dreams exactly. and visions are depicted throughout the whole Bible. Oh, yeah. And, and, and the last book of the Bible, Revelation, tells how John, one of Jesus' closest followers, matter of fact, he built himself as the disciple that Jesus loved, not John the Baptist, his cousin, but John, one of the sons of Zebedee, him and James. And John actually was never martyred. They tried to kill him. They killed James, but they could not kill John. And he lived to be very old, very old, 90s, probably 100. And uh, uh, received a vision of heaven uh, with the streets of gold. Now, Matthew 21, 2 through 7, what does that say, Brother Wayne? It's a saying to them, go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied there and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say the Lord has need of them and immediately he will send them. This took place to fulfill yeah. what was spoken through the prophet. Uh, say to the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. Disciples went and did just as Jesus had instructed them and brought the donkey and the colt and laid their coats on them. And he sat on the coats. Most of the crowd spread their coats in the road, and others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them on the road. The crowds going ahead of him, and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Yes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he had entered Jerusalem, all the city was stirred, saying, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Now, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and uh, Sanhedrin knew that prophecy that mm -hmm. Jesus was sitting on a colt coming into the city, Jerusalem. And uh, they knew it. A lot of the people didn't, but they knew what that was all about. And the thing is, uh, God, another way that's different ways God speaks in the Bible, all through the Bible, he speaks. And then uh, pursuing God is essential to hearing God. Did you know that? When you pursue him. God tells us very clearly in the Bible that the more we seek him, the more we are going to experience his presence in our lives. That's seen him. Now, if you go to Jeremiah uh, 29, 13, and um, I'm going to, you know, I, I'm going to read this. It says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart, all your heart. And what is that? Your heart? Is that the heart in your chest? What are they talking about? Heart? No, I think what they're talking about. When you get into the heart, it uh, actually it refers to your your spirit and your and your um, oh, what do you call it? Subconscious. 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 Uh, you know, when it goes to the spirit, if you if you continue to go against the spirit, then it goes to your subconscious in you eye. And you wind up uh, having a seared conscience. Right. Well, pursuing God is essentially hearing God. Here's another scripture in Hebrews 11, 6. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to God must believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of those who earnestly seek him. Another one is in Proverbs 17. It says, I love those who love me and those who seek me find me. Uh and then it says in, in Psalms, um, which David was not the only psalmist. Moses wrote one of the Psalms 40, which was disciplining Israel. There were other psalmists. And the Lord looks down from heaven. This is Psalm 14, 2. And the Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand and who seek God. And that's what he's looking for. And then also God, we mentioned, speaks through the Holy Spirit. You know that, Brother Wayne? Speaks to the Holy Spirit. And if you go to John uh, 16, 12 through 15, Brother Wayne, I think we have an important nugget, what Jesus said. 
And if it's a red letter Bible, these are actually his words, 16, John 16, written by one of the sons of Zebedee. He also said that he was a disciple that Jesus loved. 16, 12 through 15. And what do you have? I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me, for he will take up mine and will dis disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he takes of mine and will disclose it to you. Yes. And, and you know, you're going to get the opportunity at the end of our program. Uh, if, if it says that Jesus be part of your life, you can find out how and know God personally. And we're going to give you the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, if you choose to do that. Now, what distracts you from hearing God's voice? Okay, Brother Wayne, what distracts you? I think the cares of this life. Mm -hmm. does Bus it. Busyness. Mm -hmm. Busyness. And what is busyness, Brother Wayne? It's the most common distraction. Uh, so busy with things, you know, just like I mentioned before, I started to listen to the Lord hearken to his voice. And, and he's the most important person in my life, person in my life. Uh, God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. Um, he is mentioned in some songs, the air that we breathe. You know, the air in our lungs are his breath. And uh, uh, also outside influences. Well, what, what are the, some outside influences that would uh, would the because the Bible says that God breathed into Adam the breath of life. He didn't give him mouth to mouth resuscitation, did he? Oh, yeah. And my question is this: Is it possible that the air that we breathe is actually the Spirit breathing into us? Wow. Yeah, it's very possible, brother Wayne. No. That's a revelation itself. <laughs> yes, that's a revelation. What about uh, busyness steals your ability to slow down long enough to hear God's voice? He's speaking, but we don't hear him. We mentioned that earlier. Um, I think we need to meditate on the word, too. Uh, once you once you make a prayer, we usually stop at the prayer, and that's it. Uh, we make a prayer, and then we stop and go on. Yeah. But uh, the Bible says that we need to meditate on the word day and night. Day and night. So that means that what happens after you pray, you've got to sit there for a while and 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 listen to see if God's going to answer or whatever. Right. You know, we have so to be have to meditate. We have to be like cows. You know, cows when they chew their cud, mm -hmm. they have like so many stomachs, and it comes back and they chew it, they mutter it and chew it. And and the more we seek him, the more we find him, and the more opportunity we have of hearing his voice, uh, whether it be through a prophet, whether it be through the Holy Spirit. Or whether it be an well, audible I think it's voice. Like this. I mean, if if you if if you're far away from God, you can't hear very well. <laughs> yeah, and you can't hear him very well. But the closer you get, the louder he gets. Yeah, so, just like Moses, he went near the burning bush to hear right, his voice. To hear his voice. His voice. Uh, these outside influences. It says not only do people fill their schedules, but they also fill their minds with technology at your fingertips, social medias, all these different things. And, and if you look on my phone, all my social medias have to do with God, all of them. And, uh, and, and this constant stream of messaging, okay? You know, sending a message, texting. Uh, well, like I say, it's important. It, it's important what, what you're allowing your poor senses to send message to your soul. You mm -hmm. have to, you know, what, what are you watching? What you know? What are you? What are you saying? Uh, the the Bible says that the life and death is in the power of the tongue. Yes. So you know you gotta you gotta discipline yourself on on what you're saying, what you're hearing, what you're seeing, what you're smelling, uh, what you're touching. Uh, uh, how many you know when you sit down and watch television? Are you sitting there watching horror stories, right. or, or or are you going in to learn? something of god of god uh, of you life. know through the through that television because that's what it's there for that's why god created it so that we could learn more about him uh through through uh, uh the media yeah you know television tv it tells a vision yeah you know and it controls your mind 
Um, have you ever heard of people going to a movie and seeing some stuff that they shouldn't be looking at and just getting out and walking out? I I have done that. Before. Yeah, yeah, and because we shouldn't put those things before our eyes. Yeah, because what it does is 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 once it gets in the soul and the soul goes with the spirit and the spirit tells it not to watch it, but the flesh says, "Hey, I like this. I you know I don't want mm -hmm. you know I don't want to leave it. You know I don't care what the spirit says." I paid for it. the ticket. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. And it feels good. <laughs> you know what that old saying is do, you know, if it feels good, do it. Yeah. You know, uh, and that, that's of the flesh and we're not to follow the flesh. No. And, uh, but it's up to the soul to decide, to, to decide which way we follow though. Yeah. When we walk with God, we worship him in the flesh, right? When what? We walk with God. We worship him in the flesh. No, no we worship him in spirit, spirit. and in truth. truth. And uh, and Jesus said, well, it goes to tell you that that if you want the truth, the truth cannot be found in the world. It has to be found in the spirit. Right. Right. That, and when you know the truth, the truth will make you free. And who's the truth is Jesus. Jesus. He's the way, the, the truth, truth and, and the, the life. life. And no one comes to the father. But through him. But through him. And you said the way to know the difference is by spending time with God and knowing what he says in the Bible. That's how you know the difference. What is the truth and what is yeah, not? It'll, God will never, when God speaks, he'll never go outside this Bible. No, he won't. So you can, you know, whatever he tells you, you'll find it in the Bible somewhere. Right, right. And, and you'll find it there. And other things that distract God's voice from you is behaviors and attitudes, Brother Wayne. It says choices can drown out God's voice. Mm -hmm. Your attitude and habits can lead you away from him and without realizing it, without realizing right. it. And who wants to lead you away from him but Satan himself? And his name, Satan, means accuser of the brethren. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. uh, once sinful behavior becomes a pattern, Brother Wayne, uh, they start directing choices. Sins that are hidden and covered up with uh, lead to shame. And that will make you want to hide from God. Right. Who hid from God in the garden? What's that? When they sinned, who hid from God? Who Adam, Adam and did. woman. Yes, Adam did. yes. And uh, he was what? Naked. 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 And naked means he was transparent to everyone. He lost the Shekinah glory of God. He lost his covering. Another thing is apathy. Brother Wayne will distract us. Some behaviors keep us from hearing God's voice, but many people do not realize that doing nothing can keep us from hearing God's voice too. Doing nothing. And uh, uh, actually, um, um, Eddie Dombrowski mentioned that. Why is God silent? Hearing nothing because we're not listening. Um, how do you know, here's a question, how do you know you're hearing God's voice? How do you know you're hearing God's voice, Brother Wayne? God speaks in many ways. He speaks often. But there are a lot of voices trying to speak to us all the time. A lot of spirits out there, familiar spirits. So how do you know if you're hearing God's voice? Question, how would you know? You, you personally, how do you know that you're hearing God's voice? Well, I think that, that, that with God, number one, uh, it, yeah, I think it's going to be a, a, a peaceful, easy feeling um, when uh, when you hear from God. I don't think God is the type to. Well, he's got a big stick know, he's and he's not, ready to hit you. He's not that type of person. Yeah. Uh, he's very gentlemanly. He'll talk in a and a a voice that's that's loving uh, mm -hmm. and give you a lot of peace and harmony about what you're doing. And, and he'll confirm it or he'll tell you no, yes, one right. or the other. That's right. So he gives you a few ways to confirm what you think you're hearing. Same. One is scripture. God mm -hmm. speaks through the Bible. Yep. You know, if you, if you study scripture, uh, you'll know what it is like to hear God's voice. You'll know that it's not the enemy. Mm -hmm. Although Satan reads the Bible more than some Christians, some, you know, just uh, theologians. Um, if you think you've heard God speaking to you, but it seems to be inconsistent with the character of God in the Bible, it is unlikely that what you heard came from him. Uh, 
your your defense against this is knowing the Bible and knowing God in a way that enables you to know the voices you're hearing. Another one, uh, affirmed by others, okay? Affirmed by others. You are not meant to live the Christian life in your strength or independently, and you have Christ and the Holy Spirit, and you, you also have a Christian community to be in a community of other believers. Iron sharpens iron. Uh, many times we would talk, and either one of us would have a difference of opinion. And when it gets closer to God, we would either change that opinion because we're, we're teachable. We're teachable. And when trying to discern God's voice, discern God's voice, it is a good idea to find other believers. Other believers. Uh, it's a good idea to find other believers who have been walking with Christ longer than you have. Ask them if they can affirm what you sense the Lord saying to you, you know, and that that's important. Uh, you have to be like in the Bible, in uh, Revelation, there's a uh, people called the Bereans, and they studied the scriptures daily. Uh, St. Paul or Saul would speak to them and tell them, and they would study the scriptures to make sure what he was saying was correct. And what about persistent message? God is consistent, isn't he? He is persistent, and he does not lose patience or give up. He communicates like that as well. He is continually speaking to us, continually, Brother Wayne. If you believe that you are hearing God say the same thing you uh, to you over a period of time, and perhaps through several other uh, ways, different ways, uh, you can hear him. Be confident in your ability to recognize his voice. He says, my sheep shall what? Hear my voice. Hear, and know my here's voice. A, here's, here's something that uh, my uh, my uh, my stepfather was alcoholic. What's he his got name? Caught, he got caught driving his trunk, truck. What was from, his name? Uh, Bruce. Bruce, okay. And uh, anyway, I had to go with him down to the courthouse to do these meetings that he had to go to. And uh, in one of the meetings, they had this kid. What they did is bring these people up that had uh, encounters with with um, uh, alcoholics. And this one kid got up, and he was a tennis pro. And uh, he got uh, he was paralyzed from the waist down. And his father was talking about how that happened. And what it was is that a friend of his went and took him to a party picked him up, took mm -hmm. him to a party. They were all drinking and partying and all this stuff. Then the kid come back and told him that brought him, said, I'm going home now. If you want to ride home, come with me. Wow. And, and did he listen? Was, no, he did not. He did not listen. And what happened is he stayed till the party was over. And then he wound up having a drunk guy take him home. They had a tree and he wanted to paralyze from the waist down. So these are these are the things that can happen when you don't listen to God. When you don't listen to God. When you don't hear and, and recognize his voice. Right. And then also, uh, you got to spend time with God. Mm -hmm. you got to spend time with God to know that mm -hmm. he's speaking. Well, the four tips to practicing hearing from God, Brother Wayne, is one, the daily office strategy. Set aside time every day to approach God. Make an appointment with him, you know, in the morning. And give them 10 minutes. I listened to a program called Give Me 15. I sent you that. Yeah. And that talked about how, how enemy wants to take you out, especially if you're working towards God. And the next one is meet regularly with other believers in a church or Christian ministry. It says in my Bible, forbid not that the saints assembling of saints. And then spiritual breathing. Uh, because sin and distractions can crowd out God's voice in our lives. It is virtually uh, vital to regularly ask God to show you anything that keeps you from him. God, show me what is keeping me from you, you know. And then one final thing is you need to pursue God. If you pursue God, if you grow up, God will show up. Yeah. God wants your relationship with him to deepen over time. Not to be shallow, but deepen over time. The more you approach him, the more you will get to know him and trust him and recognize his voice, the more you approach him.
Trusting God is ultimately uh, more about knowing who he is and what he is like the understanding exactly he is doing in your life and giving you points on that. So if you understand that, you go to Psalm 41. It says, Bless, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. That's how you become blessed. Um, Brother Wayne, anyways, that we did some scriptures on how do you hear God's voice. And now we're going to give you an opportunity uh, to wake up your spirit, man, for those of you that have never received Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And uh, if you resurrect the spirit from the dead, resurrect spirit from the dead. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so if you bow your heads, close your eyes, we always give you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. I believe that that and we both believe that it's the most important thing is the beginning of your journey. Salvation is the beginning of your journey with the creator of the universe. So bow your heads, close your eyes, and repeat after me. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I thank you. I thank you. For a personal faith. For a personal faith. That you are the son of God. That you are the son of God. And my Lord. And my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. I believe that you died. I believe that you died. You were buried. You were buried. And you rose on the third day. And you rose on the third day. And because I believe it. And because I believe open it. Open your eyes, people. Because I believe it. Because I believe it. I'm born again. I'm born again. As you receive me, As Jesus. As you receive me, Jesus. I receive you. I receive you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all God's children said amen, amen and amen. amen. And we're going to interview next week on the 13th of September, uh, Bishop Earl Fisher. And it's going to be exciting. Uh, you want to just mark it down in your thing, 11 to 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, wherever you are in the world. Amen. And uh, share this podcast with your family, your friends, and your enemies. Because why your enemies? Because one day your enemies just might be your brother or sister in Christ. Thank you. Be blessed. And we'll see you on the 13th of September. At the way Jesus loves me I stand amazed At the way that he came When he said he loved me Forever all eternity I stand amazed at the way